Gladly these days it isn't too difficult to find a Tesla coil on the internet. It was a little bit of an expense, but for me it was far too cool an idea not to try, so I had to get one. Okay, so straight off the bat, I need to be clear. When using a Tesla coil, never touch the output pin in the middle of the Tesla coil. The coil creates an extremely high voltage so you could get fried. The high frequency sparks, however, <laughs> so you can touch the sparks. I mean, you can feel it, but it doesn't burn. The arcs of electricity are moving far too quickly to cause noticeable damage. That being said, don't take advice from me. I'm an idiot. So this is going to be safe to use. It's noisy, but it's fun. What I would say is, don't try this at home, unless you're really stupid like me. I also forgot to mention that I've got these cool little bulbs that get powered by the arcs of electricity that I'm going to work into the build somehow. So for my diorama, I wanted the arcs of electricity to be coming down into the lab, causing all kinds of flickering shadows. This meant turning the Tesla coil upside down and housing it inside the roof. Thankfully I'm working with the classic horror imagery and the iconic Americana style haunted house tower look was going to suit the build perfectly, leaving me with loads of room to build the Tesla coil into. For the roof I used balsa wood, super glue and cardboard creating a really solid structure that would hold the weight of the Tesla coil and also withstand any knocks or dropping accidents. To find the centre point of the cardboard for the output pin of the Tesla coil to poke down through I simply marked it with a pen and pressed it into place, leaving me with the perfect placement to cut my hole. Because this piece is purely a display piece for fun, I wanted it to be easy to remove the Tesla coil at any point. Also, the diorama is kind of a book nook not intended to be seen from multiple angles. It was easy for me to build the roof in such a way that I could access the Tesla coil easily and remove it if I ever wanted it for a different project. I will be leaving the back panel of the roof clear and only be laying shingles on the front three panels. Okay, you get the idea with how I made the roof, so let's print off some awesome STLs from Zay Morgan Crafts. So this whole Frankenstein's lab project is an idea that I've been bouncing around for almost a year now, and I've been brainstorming the project with my friend Zane from Zane Morgan Crafts. Zane designs STL files to incorporate into his builds on his channel, and I recently acquired a 3D printer, so I had to use some of his designs. When I mentioned it to Zane, he offered to design me STL files that were specifically for my project based on my measurements for the build. I gave Zane some reference images, and in the blink of an eye, he sent me these awesome windows and trims which are going to take the look of my build to another level. I love this dormer window that he made, and I kind of wanted to make a separate feature of the build, so I decided to create a diffused window pane to glue onto the back with some hand-drawn curtains. That way when the light shines behind it you can see the light flickering with the curtains diffusing the light again. There are some more Zen Morgan STLs a little later on in the build so keep an eye out for those. Right, time to make some shingles. I was briefly tempted to use individual shingles for this project but to be honest I was already under time pressure so I just free hand cut some shingle strips from XPS foam and glued them into place making sure to offset the placement to give the roof some variation. I give the shingles some texture with a pen to make them look old and weather beaten before cutting some individual cardboard shingles for the trim around the edges, giving them a gothic pointy kind of shape which finished off the look really nicely. And with the structure of the roof complete, it was time to move on to building the lab itself. Of course I used XPS foam for the walls, using all the standard foam crafting techniques to carve and texture the bricks. If you're new to crafting and have just found this channel, then you've just discovered one of the finest crafting materials you can get. XPS is so easy to work with. You can make it look like stone, you can make it look like wood, and the only tool you really need for the job is a fine point pen. With all my structures pretty much complete, it was time to move on to the painting. Now, in this video, I am not going into a painting tutorial, guys. All that I will say is that I chose my colours to be relatively dark and suit that gothic vibe. If you're new to crafting or you're just curious about the colours that I use, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to explain any steps that you're not clear about from the footage. I use some very simple techniques such as dry brushing and the use of washes to give me a nice believable stonework and woodwork. Okay, now that everything was painted, it was time to piece the whole thing together with PVA glue and start to figure out the layout of my lab. But first, we need more electricity. So in Frankenstein's lab, not only does he have the obvious arcing bolts of electricity that come from Tesla coils and Jacob's ladders, but there are also various machines beeping away with flickering and flashing lights. I soldered together some very basic strings of lights using yellow flicker LEDs, and then I worked them into the project, making sure all the wires were concealed behind the walls. 
With my wiring in place, I was finally able to glue my walls down to the base of the structure, but I wasn't happy that all of my light would be coming from the back. More lights needed. This time I used a string of LEDs that I simply pulled through the roof to create some hanging lanterns that will cast overhead ambient light throughout the entire build, making sure that none of the details get lost in the gloomy shadows. I also added some jewellery chain to cover up the wires and make it look a little more authentic. And that is my lighting complete. Time to place in the machines and see how they look. The machine on the right is another very awesome STL from Zane Morgan Crafts, but the machine on the left is a scratch built kit bash that I made. Here is a very quick look at how I made it. So in my opinion a mad scientist lab wouldn't be complete without a tank full of random body parts ominously looming in the corner. For this little scratch build I used various beads and washers which I glued to a small plastic bottle. I also used XPS foam for the base to which I glued some of these little needle covers which my friend Tina gave to me. Next I painted up some old zombie minis in gruesome colours, cut them up, shoved them in the bottle, filled it with green water and glued it all together. For the paint job I went for a brassy copper look which I carry out through the whole build and there we have a gruesome tank full of random body parts ready for Frankenstein to do his worst. Okay let's get on to finishing this lab. I found some really cool additional STLs to print off from various sources online which I will link in the description below. It took me ages to find the right files for Frankenstein, Igor and the monster. I actually got all three of these from different sources because they had the aesthetic that I was looking for for each character. Once printed off and primed with black paint though they were all looking really cool and I was very happy with the choices that I had made. Of course I also printed off various other bits of machinery some of which I adapted with some screws to help attract the bolts from the Tesla coil, a gruesome surgical table, Zen's crazy lab machine which will have lights behind the panel and a lightning rod for the roof. Yes I know it's a radio mast but it still looks cool. And that means we are on to pretty much the final stage of the build, painting minis. Now I really wouldn't consider myself a mini painter at all, I would say I have a passable basic standard. Occasionally I get some of my friends to paint minis for me so that I can have that top quality standard, but this time I wanted to stretch myself a bit and complete the project myself. In the end I was actually pretty pleased with the paint job that I managed to achieve. I thought the blood spatters on Frankenstein's apron were a really nice touch, and when it came to the monster, well, I'm just really happy with how he turned out. Okay, so all my minis are painted, all the machines are glued in, everything's stuck together. The last detail is cobwebs. I'm using spider serum from Green Stuff World, and that's why I'm outside, because this stuff's really messy. So what can I say about spider serum? Well, I love the effect, but I hate the product. It took me about an hour to clean my airbrush after finishing this. Still, I think it's worth it. There we go, all done. On to the big reveal. that almost amounted to agony, I collected the instruments of life around me that I might infuse a spark of being into the lifeless thing that lay at my feet. It was already one in the morning, the rain pattered dismally against the panes and my candle was nearly burnt out, when, by the glimmer of the half-extinguished light, I saw the dull yellow eye of the creature open. It breathed hard and a convulsive motion agitated its limbs. It's alive! 